Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Max Sport, My Motivation Campaign. I hope everyone has been enjoying the series so far, and I'm delighted now to be joined by Irish Rugby 7 star Greg O'Shea. Greg, how are things? Very good, Marie. Thanks for having me on. How are you? No, no worries at all. I'm great, actually, enjoying the sunshine and uh, getting to talk about sport is always good because we can't see it anywhere, so it's good to chat about it. Yeah. So what have you been up to just in terms of training? Yeah, so I moved back home to my family house in Limerick and I have been here for five years, I'd say. Um, so it's kind of weird being back home and kind of under the mother's rules and all of like that. I feel like I'm 16 again, um, but it's just handier because we have a full gym here and I can train out the back pitches. So it's perfect. If I was up in the apartment in Dublin, I'd just be kind of very enclosed and losing my head. So it's a better, better time here and I'm with the family as well. So it's great. And so where are you at in terms of qualification now for the Olympics? I know that's a big dream for most people involved in the sevens. Yeah, so the Olympics is my big focus at the moment, the team's focus. And we're not fully qualified just yet. We've one more tournament to win, which was supposed to be in June. So it was supposed to be next month. Um, but obviously that's not happening now because the Olympics is postponed and everything's postponed. So it's, everything's just pushed to next year. So it's just another year um, longer. And at the time, when we first heard it, we all kind of got a bit down, a bit grumpy about it because we were so focused and so ready to go for it. Um, but to be honest, we're just onto the World Series and we're still finding our feet. So it's probably better to have a year to get better and stronger and, and more cohesive as a team and have a crack up next year. Yeah, that's interesting because for a lot of people who would probably have been trying to peak for just a few months' time, it, it suits then others that they do get that time to develop uh, whatever they need to secure that qualification and then hopefully do better when you get there. 100%. And there's loads of players, like not even speaking of our team specifically, but like other sports, there's people that have long-term injuries. For instance, like, Joey Carberry, he had a big injury and he now has so much time to recover and get ready. So when Robbie gets back, we're going to have all the best stars back, all the best uh, players playing. So I can't wait for the, the world to get back playing sport. I know, it's hard, isn't it? Are you missing it? Oh, oh I'm missing it so much. There's nothing like Asian soccer is the only thing you can get online and that's about it. Well, the Bundesliga is back now, but um, it will gradually all start coming and we have to be safe and, and make sure it comes back properly. Yeah, I think everybody's kind of watching to see what's happening in Europe and then hopefully we can take our lead from how things go there. So just like yeah. in terms of, of training, Greg, so like you're a professional athlete, you've been in lockdown for a few months, like a lot of people. What's your routine like? Yeah, so our routine hasn't really changed. It's just we're all doing it by ourselves now. So we still have a full-time program that we're getting sent out every week. So it's four runs and five gyms and then we all have to kind of get skills done by ourselves, whichever means is possible. Um, so the bodies are still tired and still getting the work done, but it's just we're not getting any teamwork done or any team moves or anything like that. So I think the plan for the IR7 team is probably the same with the 15s uh, teams as well, is that to get all the fitness stuff done, so like the running and the weights and be conditioned and ready to come back and just go straight into team plays and skills and everything and get ready to, to play on that side of things. So it will all come together hopefully and the plan will work and I'll be flying fit. So a lot of people are kind of taking the time to work on different parts of their game, whether it be skills or fitness. Is there anything that you've been working on in particular that you wanted to improve or, or needed a break from even in an, an, an area that you needed to, to just recover? Uh, one thing I've actually been uh, trying to improve myself is I hurt my right ankle just before the whole lockdown thing happened. And I haven't been able to kind of bounce off. It's kind of it's, it's a very kind of sporting thing now to be focusing on. But I haven't been able to step off it as strong as I want to. So I'm really focusing on strengthening up my right leg and having the agility off it. So it's kind of a boring one, but that's what I'm focusing on at the moment is having both sides equal so I can move properly when we get back playing. And how's that working out for you? It's, it's getting there. It's getting there slowly, but it's just kind of keeping motivated and, and seeing the long picture. Because I kind of had a bit of a, a couple of weeks ago, a bit of a down moment, not like upset or anything, but it was just like, oh my God, we're doing this for so long. Where's the finish line? I want to get back playing. And it was kind of hard to keep motivating myself for a few days, but then I kind of just copped onto myself and realized that I'm fit, I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm training for a living. Like, what am I complaining about? So I got going again and I'm, and I'm excited. I'm buzzing again. There is going to be a lot of people watching this who will be in that situation. Like they're, you know, they might they might not be professional athletes. They're just regular people who are trying to fit their exercise in, and and they're going to have a slump and, and not feel motivated. How do you get out of that? Like, how did you get out of that little bit of a slump that you had? Um, so there's kind of two tips I'd have for people, and that one is that you're allowed a down day, you're allowed an off day. Like you don't have to be on the money every single day, or like 
every day there wouldn't be good days then every day would just be the same so you're allowed to have a down day where you go and train you might get a takeaway or something that's fine as long as it doesn't last for like a week long um and then what i do to kind of get myself back into being productive is that i write down a list of maybe three or four things i want to get done that day and it could be so simple it could be like clean your room or get gym done or answer five emails something like that and just tick it off and once you tick it off you actually get a release of like dopamine and it makes you feel happy and you keep going and you feel productive at the end of the day and that's what i do just writing lists and uh knowing you don't have to be on the ball every single minute of every day as well do, you, do your teammates motivate you? Like, are you in WhatsApp groups, Zooms? How are you staying connected? Yeah, so we have all the WhatsApp groups and there's always slagging going, going back and forth. And we've all kind of acknowledged that it's tough to stay motivated, but we realise that we're doing, we're all doing the same thing in our own houses and our own places. So that kind of gets you through a session when you know, oh, I know he's up in Dublin running on the pitch right now. So I have to do this rep because he's doing it as well. And then on, well, at least once a week, we all have a Zoom call and we do like a, a Zoom hit session where one guy will create the session. So he'll be like three sets of burpees or push-ups or sit-ups, whatever it is. And we all have a Zoom call and we're all watching each other doing it. So that's a bit of crack and kind of a bit of banter flowing to get that team camaraderie camaraderie that we don't really have at the moment it sounds competitive as well is it oh completely yeah we're all trying to outdo each other with our, our sessions that we're creating but it's a bit of crack and it's good to see the boys do you think it's a big benefit to have to be part of a team like you know i've spoken to a lot of individual athletes over the last few months who were in lockdown by themselves and it is hard when they're doing the same thing day in day out by themselves and they don't kind of have that camaraderie like you said and um you know yeah. just people around you to motivate you yeah 100 percent. i actually used to compete in athletics as well so i kind of understand that um individual sport i competed internationally for sprinting and rugby at the same time then i chose rugby just because i was better at it and more <laughs> more look looked like i had more of a career on that side but it's definitely harder to be an individual athlete like it's just you have to motivate yourself and there's no kind of bouncing off each other and if I'm having a down day or one of the lads is having a down day we can just pick each other up and be like come on man let's go let's get this done together um so i have a lot of respect for individual athletes and ones that are at the top of their game like the olympians and the people that go to worlds and everything like that they are just so mentally strong as well as physically strong so they should be proud of themselves absolutely so the olympics yeah. greg like how big a dream is that for you now oh it's it's the pinnacle like there's just you can't get bigger than the olympics like arguably maybe a world cup but um, I think the Olympics is the pinnacle of, of all sport across any country, any discipline. And that's probably the big reason why I kind of stepped away from the whole Love Island celebrity lifestyle. I did all that and I had the opportunity to move to the England and be the a couple and get all the contracts and all that stuff, which is great. But it didn't really sit right with me. And I was like, I'm going home, I'm training, I have to get back to the boys. And everyone that knows sevens knows it's not financially lucrative like we get paid less than minimum wage and we all have to have second jobs to kind of supplement our our uh, lives which is fine like that's very similar to the GAA lads um so I definitely didn't chase the money but I'm chasing the dream and I've been working my whole life to to try and be a professional rugby player and even though the 15s didn't work out for me because of certain things I've now the sevens pathway and the Olympics is just in touch and distance so why not give it my all you know when you think about it, like if you look back through your career, you know, setting out wanting to be a 15s rugby player and then the Love Island thing coming in as well and the sevens, like you've been through quite a lot of um, decisions that you had to make, I, I guess, or kind of, and some setbacks as well and coming out the other side of it. For someone so young, you've had to cope with quite a lot. Yeah, definitely. Um, and the big one that kind of sticks up for me that was, that really kind of, sh I struggled with mentally for a while was the, my dream of, Playing for Munster and playing for Ireland in 15s was just, it's every young Munster player, young guy wants to do that. And then I had a big accident where I lacerated my Achilles and all that happened. And it kind of just got taken away from me for something that wasn't in my control. But sure, that's life. Like, you just have to kind of get over that and move on. And that would never have given me the pathway to go into the sevens and travel the world with my mates and see the world. And then it, I wouldn't be able to go on Love Island if I was still doing the 15s rugby. So and a lot of opportunities have come from Love Island. So everything happens for a reason. And it's kind of just seeing the bigger picture and realising everything happens for a reason and doing what feels right for you. Um, so it's going all right so far. I hope, I hope it works out in the end. We'll see. Yeah, you have packed so much in. But like, do you, do you take time and kind of reflect on everything that you, you have achieved over the last few years? 
I do, yeah. When I sit down and kind of think about it, I'm like, geez, I've done all right for a 25-year-old young fella, you know? Um, and I've no idea where I'm going to end up right now because obviously I did the radio for a bit in RT2 FM like yourself. And then I wanted to be a solicitor. So that's kind of the long-term goal. I still want to be a solicitor or I have can be an Olympian right now if I really, really push my team. So there's so many opportunities and I don't know where I'm going to be in a couple of years, um, but we'll see what happens. So yeah, I'm doing okay, I think. I was going to say, it's quite a, a good situation to be in. Potentially a solicitor, an Olympian, professional athlete. There's a lot of people, I'd say, who wouldn't mind uh, doing some of that anyway, Greg. Yeah, well, hopefully one of them works out for me. None of them are solidified at the moment, but we're on track for one of them. We'll see. There's like People as well, I think, are using this time to to think about the future and think about things that they want to achieve, whether it is um, changing careers or like retraining in something. Like, have you set any new goals over the last few months? Yeah, so I started doing a lot of Pilates stuff. I don't know if you've seen that online because I have a Pilates qualification. I never used it before. And now that we're all just sitting at home, I was like, you know what, I'll throw up a few videos and try and get a few people moving. And it seemed to have gone well. So then I was like, oh, I kind of enjoy coaching people. So I signed up to do a coaching course and now I'm, I'm a qualified weight loss coach as well, which I don't know why. I just am. I got that done. So <laughs> I'll start uh, maybe teaching people how to lose weight. We'll see. That's another op opportunity for me. And I've also signed up to do my professional law exams again because I know I have time to do them. Um, so I'm kind of ticking off everything and kind of keeping courses going as, as now we have time to, to do stuff that we never had like planned for before we've loads of months and loads of time now to get stuff done um so i have to try and do something so we'll see where do you get all the energy from <laughs> I, don't, I don't know sometimes i'm like oh i'd love a day off and then you get the day off right and i'm just sitting there and i'm like because i feel unproductive i need to do something i'm just not able to sit down i don't know what it is maybe you're probably similar enough to that you're always doing stuff as well i just can't deal with sitting down for a long period of time without being productive so it probably comes from my parents they're always doing bits and pieces and they were always working very hard. So it probably comes from an influence from them. So tell me about the World Series, because there'll be a lot of people, as you know, who aren't too well versed on Sevens Rugby. So what does the World Series entail for you guys? So the World Series, is a lot of people don't even know what Sevens Rugby is. So basically, if you know 15s we'll Rugby, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you know 15s, which is your Munster, Leinster, Connacht, Ulster, it's, the same game, same rules, but just with seven people a, a team, and that's what it is, it's seven aside. And the halves are only seven minutes long, so games are only 14 minutes. So it's a lot more, in my, my opinion, and in my sister's opinions and stuff, it's a lot more entertaining because there's tries all the time, and they're only quick games, so you're not sitting there for 80 minutes. You have to be really into rugby to sit down and watch for 80 minutes. Like So ours is kind of more of an entertaining sport, and there's matches going all the time, and people just drink and watch the rugby on in the middle of the stadium. So it's great crack. And we travel the world doing it. So there's 10 different locations we go to. We go to like Hong Kong and Singapore and then Vancouver and LA. We do Sydney and New Zealand. We do South Africa. We do all, all of them, which is great. We're supposed to be in London and Paris at the moment, but obviously we're not there. Um, so it's a great way to see the world. But there's, there's not as much money in it as there would be from the 15 side of things. So um, I think that's a big decision for certain players to stick with the 15s route. But I'm happy with the lifestyle of sevens and... I'm not dealing with big 130 kg props running at me, so I'm happy. <laughs> Are you worried now, though? Well, like you mentioned, they're traveling the world in some of the most amazing cities and um, uh, on the World Series, but they're obviously yeah. far away. A lot of them are. And just given what's happening now with COVID 19 and restrictions, are you worried about the future of the Sevens and the World Series? Yeah, there's definitely a bit of a worry there because we'll be the last to come back. For rugby in rugby terms because it's just flying 16 different countries from around the world into one populated area so you cannot do that at the moment with COVID like it's just crazy um, so we were supposed to have four more four or five more tournaments this season and they all got scrapped of course um, and then we're going to hopefully start the season in December which is the 2021 season in Dubai but even there's a bit of a question mark over that whether everything will be okay and you have to bring other governments into it if they're happy for their citizens to to travel or more people to come in so we'll see hopefully it, it will be okay because we have an olympics next year we need to get ready for so they'll, they'll come up with some plan world rugby but for the moment we'll have to just stay in our own places and what about the problems with the irfu we saw philip brown coming out last week saying that having no fans and no matches at the moment anyway as well like that it could be absolutely catastrophic for the um, irfu if they don't get government support so like with you being part of the IRFU, is, is that a worry for you as well? 
Yeah, and I'm actually, I'm the, on the RPI, the Rugby Players Ireland Executive Board, I'm the representative for the seven, so I've been kind of involved in all those meetings with the IRP as well. And to be fair, I put my hand up to the RPU. They've probably dealt with it best financially for their employees than any other union in the world. Like, so there's kind of, England gives straight away 25% pay cut to most of their players. New Zealand had to lay off some coaches and things like that. And like, obviously, own, their own unions deal with it in their own way. But the RFU kept everyone on the same money and didn't lay off anyone, which is great. But obviously, money it runs out eventually and there's no, there's no fans going to games. There's no revenue coming in. So down the line, the RFU might have to do something. Um, hopefully, it doesn't come to anything bad. But at the moment, everyone's kind of still hoping that rugby will get back and they'll be on TV and we'll be able to get through this. But they're trying their best. Yeah, I think it's just watch, wait, hope that we get something back and then some sort of normality will come back after that if it's it's safe for yeah. um, everybody to start going back to attending then great and if it's not we'll just have to try and deal with it as best we can now Greg yeah. what you've been isolating like everybody else has living their own lives for the last few months you've 1.2 million followers on Instagram does it make it harder <laughs> or easier to self-isolate when you have this big following as well yeah, funnily enough, I haven't been speaking to the 1.2 million people for the last week because I took a social media detox. Because I've been on social media every day since I came out of Love Island last year. And before I went into Love Island, I wasn't a big media man anyway. Like, I wouldn't be on my phone for weeks on end, like, on social media. And then I go into Love Island, I come out, and I have these millions of people looking to know what I'm doing every day. So I kind of was doing that and I got to the stage in lockdown here where I was like, my mind is numbed from scrolling on this phone, like, you know, trying to look active, trying to be relevant, all this kind of stuff, which wouldn't come naturally to me. So I took a, a detox, which is great. And I've never felt so like more productive and kind of do, focusing on myself for the time being. But that won't last forever, obviously, because you need to be able to do the social media side of things as well. That's the world we live in. We're all going online now, especially with COVID. But um, it's great having my family and and friends around me so they don't let me kind of get too big for my boots and lose my head they kind of keep me grounded and even though there's I have a big following I'm still just normal Greg doing my own thing you know it must be hard though like having so many people interested in what you're doing on a daily basis and I'm sure while there is good with it there has to be some negativity that comes with it as well yeah of course there is like when I decided to follow what I was doing my my sporting dream a lot of people Love Island fans didn't like that and they turned on me like that like it was crazy like something like 300,000 or 400,000 people unfollowed me like straight away like I was getting death threats I was people telling me I should go hurt myself like crazy stuff and I could kind of laugh it off because I have good family and friends around me and I'm kind of used to locker room banter and stuff like that but if I was in any way inclined to think that way like it could really send you down a bad path so it's just crazy to, to think that there is that negative side to to celebrity lifestyle and big following so you can see other bad things have happened with love islanders in the past um so it, it's, it's really there's two sides to it all and people only see the glossy uh, fame but there's also the negative side to it so you just have to be careful if you do get caught into that world does the good outweigh the bad it does yeah it does it does i do think it does because you have so many opportunities and you meet amazing people i wouldn't be on here speaking to you do you know what i mean <laughs> you never know <laughs> um, you never know so there's great opportunities to come with it it's just be careful and it's not to be all and end all to to do reality tv and become a celebrity so you have to have your other family and friends and other stuff around you just to make sure okay it's important to say those things as well greg isn't it because like young people like yourself and younger again are all living their lives through social media and it's mm. hard i think if you haven't kind of had some life experience to understand that as well because what you're living in and that's your normality and you know it can become dangerous when you don't have perspective yeah like kids are mad into social media now. and me saying kid i am a kid basically but like this tiktok is now the new big thing and i don't even understand it know what's going on with it and people are obsessed with these things and it's just it's great it brings a lot of positivity and you'll be able to connect to people and and all this kind of bits and bobs but it's just, you don't want to get too invested in it and too stuck into it because you can just lose hours of your day and lose your mind and concentrate on it too much when there's more important things that matter in life. So um, it's just being careful and, and using it for the right things. And just for like, any advice for people who might find themselves 
like you said, scrolling all day long because it's quite hard to just put the phone down and make a decision. I'm, I'm not going to engage for a little while. Like, how did yeah. you actually physically and mentally do it? So I just, it was one evening, I remember, I think I, I sat down and I was scrolling on Instagram and I looked at the clock and I'd been there for two hours. And I was like, I don't even know what I was doing for the last two hours. And I go, do you know what? I need to step away from this. And I just wasn't going to say anything. I was just going to delete all my apps and just kind of go off and do my own thing. But I thought I'd put up a post. And if there's anyone else out there that kind of felt that way, that they were like, oh, Greg's doing it. I might do it as well. Even if one person did it as well, I'd feel good. Um, so I did that. And then I just deleted all the apps off my phone. And I haven't, I haven't gone back to look at them since. Um, so it's definitely, you're going to have to definitely take them off your phone if you are doing it. Because otherwise, if they're there, you're going to touch into them. Because I remember I picked up my phone during the first couple of days. And I go into it and I start looking at like my banking app or my Google Maps or something <laughs> like that because I didn't have the social media app. So, but after a while you forget it's not even an option anymore and it's great, but I will go back on in a couple of days. I'd say like the mix of no social media uh, or limited anyway, and kind of training every day and being at home with your family. I'd say that's quite a, quite a nice existence. It is. It's lovely, but it makes me feel like I'm 16 again. It's crazy because like I, my car also needed to be fixed, so I had no car. I was living at home with my family. I had no phone. I like I was like, oh my god, I'm a 16 year old boy again living under mommy's house. But um, it was nice to kind of refresh it, and it's completely different to the world I've been li living in for the last couple of months. So it's nice to refresh and go again. So what's the plan now? When are you back in Dublin? When are you going to be back out in that amazing centre in the National Sports Campus doing training? What is, what's the next few months hold for you? Yes, yeah, so rugby in an Irish sense, they're hoping we'll be back training at the end of June, kind of July time. And they'll obviously have social distancing measures in place. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but they have a big plan put together and they've submitted it to the government and they're waiting for the government to get back now. So we're going to get told about all that around the 8th of June. I think that's when phase two happens. Um, we're going to get told what the plan is for us. So hopefully we'll be back by the end of June and we'll get in there and we'll start social distance and training, um, which might just be literally running two metres beside each other and passing the ball and then cleaning the ball. I don't know. But it'll be good to be back with the boys and just kind of get more of a focus on team and team bonding together again. I don't know when the sevens are going to get back playing, but I know the 15s will be back um, hopefully before the end of the year. So we'll see. I think even seeing a few players running two metres apart and throwing a ball would be a welcome sight at this stage, Greg. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I can't wait. When the first match comes onto TV, I think everyone will be glued to it. Absolutely. Greg O'Shea, Ireland Sevens will be fair. Thanks so much for joining us. I really enjoyed it. And not just the sports chat, but the social media chat as well, because I think the last few months, a lot of people, myself included, have spent way too much time just sitting there on the phone, wishing that things would get back to normal, but not actually doing anything. So uh, good to get all that solid advice. I really appreciate it. 100%. Thanks for having me, Marie. Appreciate it.